What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we are talking about a crazy conspiracy about the roadmap of Tesla's battery technology. I've been obsessed with this kind of moonshot theory for the past 48 hours, been researching it like crazy, and I'm frankly kind of stuck, and I, I'm just so fascinated by it, and I'm totally, I hyperchange, it's about being bold, it's about being wrong, it's about being new, so there's a huge chance this is going to be wrong, but I just kind of want to open up where I'm at in my research process with you, the internet, because I need your help to figure this out, because it's so confusing, there's so many moving parts, I'm so out of my depth in terms of battery you know, chemistry, understanding the physics, the science behind this. I'm way out of my depth, but I think I'm onto something really, really interesting. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Tesla is, yes, they make electric cars. Yes, they make solar panels. Yes, they make huge batteries. They, they purchase the most lithium ion battery cells in the world. Originally designed for co consumer electronics, Tesla repurposed the lithium ion battery from, you know, laptops and cell phones into electric cars, stringing 4,000 of these little cells together in a massive battery, which is single-handedly transitioned the world to electric vehicles, inflecting the entire industry. So let's take a step back. Who actually invented the lithium ion technology? Where did this come from? It was by a researcher by the name of John Good Enough. Hope I'm saying that right. He is a legend in the battery space. You may have heard of him because just this year, he actually won a Nobel Prize for his work developing the lithium ion battery. John Goodenough, essentially, you know, his research in academia laid the groundwork for Tesla bringing this technology to market and getting where they are today. So John Goodenough, who right now is alive and 97 years old, if you're watching this, huge shout out, you're epic. Um, in 2016, re released a paper about a new technology um, building on his essentially lithium ion technology that was more efficient, a solid state glass electrolyte version. Um, you can go check it out. I'll put a link to this paper. Um, it's called Alternative Strategy for a Safe Rechargeable Battery, um, put out by Goodenough and Maria Braga, who is his partner researcher. Um, and this sort of took the entire battery world by storm. Um, everyone thought the performance characteristics were way too good to be true. It was a huge step up in the efficiency, um, or you basically needed a smaller battery pack, but could still hold way more energy and was able to last for way more cycles. So sort of kind of a big breakthrough in, in the lithium ion or battery world, if it was true. It was met with a lot of skepticism. People were like, no way this is actually going to work. Da -da -da -da. And so what happened since then? How does this actually work? So you have the founder of the lithium ion battery coming up with this crazy new concept next generation cell that he's working on in a lab at UT Austin. Well, the next step then is for them to get into confidential agreements with the world's you know, leading battery companies to basically start testing this and begin the process of commercialization. So they released that paper in 2016. You have to think, you know, discussions start with all of the major battery companies shortly thereafter. By 2017, we're also signing some secret, top secret NDAs to start putting Putting this chemistry to work and trying to get it to actually, you know, be viable for consumer product in the long run. And so now let's bring in Tesla because Tesla on their Q2 2017 call was asked about battery breakthroughs. And I want to play you this part of the conference call. What's your, what's your general assessment? Are we getting close to some kind of breakthroughs here? Or oh God. It, you know, what, what's your thought? Okay. You know, here's my opinion of the, you know, battery breakthrough of the week. Uh, you know, battery breakthrough du jour. Um, when somebody has like some great claim that they've got this awesome battery, you know what? Send us a sample. Or if you don't trust us, send it to an independent lab where the parameters can be verified. Otherwise, uh, STF. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so uh, pa everything works on PowerPoint. You know, you could like I give you a PowerPoint presentation about teleportation to the Andromeda galaxy. Um, uh, that doesn't mean it works. So, um, Tesla is the biggest buyer of lithium ion batteries on Earth. Um, you know who people come to first when they've got a lithium ion battery? Us, because we're the biggest customer. Um, I would love it if, if we could have some breakthrough. It would be awesome. Um, I think there are interesting things on the horizon, but but then the, the time takes from something working in the lab uh, to working at moderate production levels to working at higher production levels to optimizing the cost is several years. So it's not like it suddenly pops out of nowhere. Yeah, JP, do you want to add to that? Uh, I, I totally agree with uh, sort of, you know, thought, cautious skepticism on all these announcements and um, just more specifically on the solid state batteries, Rod. I mean, we, we do, we've talked to a number of different um, uh, groups that are researching this, we actually have tested a number of those different prototype, um, you know, 
very early prototype, you know, single cells. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, we, we don't yet see anything that changes our strategy, and um, we don't see anything there that's... But I would love it if it did. Please, yeah. please. Mm -hmm. Can someone please come up with a back directory breakthrough? We'd love it. We, we would be the uh, first ones to want to, uh, to implement it. It's yeah, totally. Um, I, I mean, I, 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 the, the, there are some, uh, some, some, some breakthroughs that I think are achievable. I, 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 they're confidential, so I can't talk about them on this call. Um, but there's one particular avenue that I that I'm confident could be made to work. That would be no, no, like uh, you know, fairly the most significant one breakthrough in, in a while. Um, but but again, that, that you got to make it work in the lab. It doesn't get work. It doesn't yet work in the lab. It's promising in the lab. You go from the lab to small production, then you go to large production, then you get to cost optimization. These are several years. Okay, I wish it was shorter, but that's the way it goes. So there, August 2017, Elon Musk and J.B. Straubel hint to them potentially researching this solid-state-esque battery that actually may have huge potential but will take years in the lab to be able to get commercialized. So that timeline is sort of all adding up. In the meantime, it looks like Braga and Goodenough's research about this new glass electrolyte met with a healthy dose of skepticism at first is sort of becoming more and more accepted. There was a new article I found um, published here in May 2019 where they talk about the update of the commercialization of this technology and they say say them that according to them, uh, Braga projects the first battery will be used in a commercial product in three years, so circa 2022. And I thought another interesting tidbit in this article, um, which I think I'm going to tie into a clue about Tesla later, she goes, the large battery banks that might be spun off from this research stand to not only have higher capacity, but also be substantially lighter than lithium ions. Although, per although she adds, perhaps the greatest weight savings will come not from comparing one battery cell's mass with another, the biggest difference would be that you don't have to have the same stainless steel bunkers in each of the cells. So a lot to unpack in this comment about how this breakthrough results in a consumer product. But I think, you know, a lighter battery that has substantially more capacity to me fits in with exactly what Tesla is developing. The Model S going around the Nürburgring, which also has to have a more advanced cooling system, which they also talk about. Sealing off each battery cell from each other to reduce the risk of runway fire would not be necessary with a non-flammable battery, as would any extensive battery management system that carefully monitors battery performance in EVs and other technologies technologies that use large banks of batteries. The BMS is to control temperatures, she says. In our case, we don't have to have that. In fact, she adds, up to a point, rising temperatures only increase the electrolytes performance. So there's something to do with the temperature control of this new good enough uh, Braga battery that's way different. The weight um, or the amount of battery you can squeeze into the same amount of weight is way higher. Think about the semi truck. Think about the roadster where people are calculating the size of those battery packs to hit those specs didn't quite add up unless there was dramatic weight savings. Maybe they're implying this battery breakthrough. Remember, the semi-truck and Roadster debut happened in late 2017, which would have been about, you know, four months or five months after Elon and JB had already began testing this technology according to that conference call. Then, the most interesting thing about this, which I think this is going to be the shoe to drop, the, the clue, this would be like the, the, the real piece of evidence, is that um, they claim the battery initially even increases its capacity as you charge it and discharge it. So it keeps getting better. This prototype solid state battery based on lithium ion glass faces criticism over claims its capacity increases over time. So as you use it, the range of your car would actually increase a little bit according to the weird way that this battery works. And so if we start to see data where the Tesla's new technology increases the length of the battery or their new research or Jeff Don's paper or any sort of thing coming out of them shows this same characteristic, there's a good chance that that is a sign they're working with this good enough uh, Braga battery. The other thing I want to bring in is Jeff Don. Speaking of Tesla's outside contractor research, Tesla signed a partnership with in 2015 to outsource a bunch of lithium ion cell battery research. When in 2017, Goodenough's breakthrough hit the wires, Jeff Don was quoted saying it's kind of like cold fusion. Here's an experiment that is unbelievable, said Dalhousie's University Jeff Don a leading researcher whose Canadian laboratory is on contract with Tesla. There could be a small possibility that it's right. So Jeff Don, interestingly enough, the same time where Elon Musk is saying, oh, there's this solid state battery that actually might have a lot of potential that we're looking into, Jeff Don, who's contracted by Tesla, is talking about specifically Goodenough's battery, and he says that it's kind of like cold fusion, it's super exciting, we need to test it in the lab. So 
what I think happened here, adding up a billion clues super speculatively, 2016, this paper comes out, John Goodenough, who do they call first to commercialize this technology? The biggest buyers of lithium ions. If you're good enough and Braga and you invented the lithium ion battery and Tesla has single-handedly commercialized it and is your, the biggest you know, proponent of this technology, then they're your biggest fan. They're like the person you'd want to work with the most. At least this is my guess. So you'd call them up and mean like, we got the next best thing. You guys want to test it? You would be the biggest customer of this product. They say, hell yeah. 2017, Tesla gets the battery cell from Goodenough and Braga. They start testing this, doing R&D. They pass it off to Jeff Don and say, run a million cycles on this, see if it's legit. Is that related to the research that he put out about the million mile battery just earlier this year, um, where the, the biggest improvement is a huge increase in the amount of cycles that that battery can have? I don't know. This is where I'm a little bit out of my depth and need you. Um, but I think that could be the sort of progression here if it were to be happening. And now we have the timeline lining up to, okay, it seems like a couple years have passed. Maybe they've started to validate this new glass electrolyte technology um, in the lab. They're starting ready to scale it up. That's why they're moving more into vertical you know, battery production. That's why they bought Maxwell. That's why they're buying high bar systems because they actually want to be able to build this battery themselves and start to commercialize this next generation technology. So to wrap it up and sum up my theory here, um, John Goodenough, the guy who invented the lithium ion cell, which is the backbone of Tesla's technology, has a breakthrough new battery. I totally am a huge skeptic of solid state battery breakthroughs, all of that. I think all of it's BS, but I think when the guy who literally invented the technology that all of our Teslas run on today says he's got something better, that might be worth listening to. And of course, Tesla has the resources and was connected enough to be testing that. So there's been no nothing about this online. I Googled the crap out of it. I couldn't find anything. Nobody's talking about this, but I'm just like left thinking like, how are Elon Musk and John Goodenough not working together on this? Like if there really is a next generation, next generation lithium ion cell, either it's BS and, and te you know, Tesla's testing it. I feel like there's no way Tesla hasn't tested this cell. Either they're testing it and it didn't live up to the hype and I'm totally wrong and that, that Tesla's not commercializing good enough technology, very good chance. Or they validate, they tested it, it worked, and that's when they sort of got the go-ahead to moving in, into their own cell production. And that would explain all the acquisitions. That would explain what they're going to announce at Battery Investor Day. I mean, imagine this headline that hits. Tesla teams up with Nobel Prize winner John Goodenough to bring his next generation EV technology to market after bringing his first one to market. I think this is could be the cat out of the bag that they want to release at Battery Train Investor Day or I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to leave you with this because it's a totally unformed opinion. I have like a million ideas swirling. I'm sorry if this episode was a little all over the place, but um, I think there's a, so much interesting stuff to unpack here. And I feel like not enough people are speculating about this connection and the timing. The timelines line up too perfectly for me to ignore this. So this is HyperChange. Once again, huge shout out to Patrick um, and his channel for, for talking to me about this. So you should definitely check out his channel if you want to learn more. Um, this is HyperChange. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun on the channel. I'll see you guys next time.